All right, this will be part five of Warning, Take Heed. Get your King James Bible and turn it to the 16th chapter of the book of Matthew. We're doing the... Um, we're doing the book... Yeah, book of Matthew, chapter 16. We're doing the New Testament. Uh, by the way, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Matthew, chapter 16, verse 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempted, desiring him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Now, they're, they're talking about him as Jesus. Now, what's the difference uh, between the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Well, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are two different denominations of Jews. Well, they call themselves Jews. The, basically, the Sadducees believe in the first five books of the Bible, what they commonly called, known as the books of Moses, which is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Whereas the Pharisees believed that in addition to the rest of the, what we call the Old Testament scriptures, the Sadducees didn't accept the books of the prophets. That would be like Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, the book of Psalms, Proverbs. Uh, they didn't accept those. The only thing the Sadducees were concerned about were the things that pertained to temple worship. Like in the book of Leviticus, it told you how to do animal sacrifices. Whereas the Pharisees somewhat believed the rest of the Old Testament, but they also had what was called the Talmud, which meant, is, means learning. And it came from Babylon. So Babylon, Tal, Tal, Babylonian Talmud basically means learning from Babylon. Think about Mystery Babylon the Great. So, in Matthew twenty-two twenty-three, 23, we read, The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection. See, the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection because it wasn't in the books of Moses. And let's see. In Acts 23, 8, it says, For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit. So the, fair, uh, the Sadducees do not believe in the resurrection. They don't believe in uh, angels. They don't believe in spirits. But it says, But the Pharisees confess both. I mean, if there's no resurrection, if there's no life after this life, what good is anything? I mean, if if you're going to eat, you know, if you're going to die and and there's no resurrection unto eternal life, what does it say in the Bible? Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. So that's a pretty sad religion, you see as in sad you see but the pharisees they were they believed in angels they believed in spirits they believed in the resurrection so all right so here it is they come to jesus tempting desiring him that he would show them a sign from heaven he jesus he answered them and said unto them when it is evening, ye say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul, foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. You know, Jonah, Jonah and the whale, three days, three nights in the whale's belly. Uh, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. 
And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed, take heed and beware, beware of the leaven, the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. I mean, come on, really? Be, beware of uh, the bread of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. I mean, come on, guys. Verse 8. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, but that ye should beware of the leaven, the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine, the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Now, what was the, the doctrines of the Pharisees? Well, in Luke chapter 12 and verse 1, In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trode one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. See, the, the, the doctrine of the Pharisees was hypocrisy. They would tell people to do things that they themselves wouldn't do. And, you know, they say that good leaders lead by example. Okay, so that's, but the Pharisees were not like that. They would tell the people, oh, to, to please God, you've got to do this that's in the law. But they didn't do it themselves. In other words, they would talk the talk, but they would not walk the walk. John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 7, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers. What's a viper? A extremely poisonous snake. O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? In Matthew 5.20, Jesus is speaking to the people, probably his disciples. He says, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, that doesn't say much for the Pharisees now, does it? If you want to know how Jesus really felt about the Pharisees, you could read Matthew chapter 23. I'm just going to read a few things here. Uh, Matthew 23, 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against, against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer, allow, or, you know, suffer means to allow, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation." Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass, that means to travel, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Verse 23, Matthew 23, 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. 
These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Isn't that, isn't that what uh, the modern preachers do today? They preach on tithing. Oh, yeah, you got to tithe. Do they talk about judgment? Do they talk about mercy? Do they talk about faith? I could show you a whole bunch of preachers. They, uh, 10, 10 out of 20 sermons will be about tithes. Matthew 23, 25. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Uh, you know, we could keep we could keep reading all, all this, but uh, I think you get the idea. All right. The doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Let's go back to Matthew 16 and 12. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now, why did he call himself the Son of Man? Because he made himself a man. Okay, a lot of people don't know it, but Jesus was God in the flesh. If you don't understand that, read 1 Timothy 3.16. God was manifest in the flesh. That's why he called himself the Son of Man. Verse 14, And they said, Some say, some say, Thou art John the Baptist. See, John the Baptist was killed. So they thought, you know, Jesus is just John the Baptist uh, resurrected. Some Elias and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Am I just a prophet? What am I? Who am I? But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. In the Hebrew, that would be Messiah. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, who's the rock? Let's take a look. If you want to know who the rock is, I know the Catholic Church will tell you the rock's Peter. Hey, Peter's all right in my book, and he's a great guy, and I want to meet him one day, but uh, let's use the Bible to interpret the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Did, did Paul get it wrong? No. Let's go back to Matthew 16, 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. That has reference to being uh, the anointed one. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Peter didn't understand the plan here. 
But he, Jesus, but he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Now this ties in with the last lesson that we just did about taking the mark of the beast. If you deny Jesus to say your skin, your flesh, you will not be in the kingdom. But if you lose, if you give up your life for the sake of Christ, if you get your head cut off for the gospel, for the for the for your faith in Christ, it says, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Yeah, you'll lose your fleshly physical life, but you'll find your eternal spiritual life. Verse 26. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. That's scary, people. That's scary. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And do me a favor, don't ask me what exactly that means because I am not sure. I ask myself that question. I wish I knew. All right, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. That's Jesus the Christ. In his precious name, amen.